Hello, Davey here, and welcome to my review of the Alphacool Nexus XP3 Lite. Now, to set the foundations, uh, to set the stage, if you're an absolute beginner to water cooling, uh, I don't think I'd recommend this one uh, to you. It is by far the cheapest, at least accessible to me, Alphacool block that I could find, um, and it is good but there are some caveats which we'll get into in the installation section in particular uh, that as a beginner I wouldn't recommend it for um, but if you're well into the game of water cooling you've done one maybe two you've had at least a block before and you have uh, some level of expectation of what a block should be like then uh, this might be a really good option for you so I'm going to go through my notes rather than have a script set up for this one. Uh, hopefully it'll be a bit of a, a shorter review to make, maybe a shorter review overall. And uh, yeah, we'll get into it through my notes and we'll cover the highlights and then get into performance and wrap up sharpish. A quick overview of the body first. It's a completely plastic body. There is a brushed aluminium top plate which has a certain colour and a sort of semi-gloss uh, finish to it uh, with the Alpha Cool logo and then the basic text on the outside. But uh, yeah, it's not in contact with the water, so it's just uh, embedded into the plastic block on top. The base plate itself, your standard copper nickel plated, nothing special going on there. It's the same for every other manufacturer. It's very smooth. I can't ascertain its flatness because I don't have the uh, a, a, a flat bar to be able to measure that. But uh, yeah, it seems very smooth and flat enough. Uh, in my actual, in my testing of removing the block after putting thermal paste on, it actually spread the paste really well. So uh, yeah, uh, full marks on that. The base plate design itself inside, once you disassemble the block, you've got all the normal components. You've got an O-ring. Uh, it's a slightly, it's not a fully symmetrical design uh, for that O-ring, uh, but that's purely because the out uh, outlet or, well, the out yeah, outlet uh, is uh, is off center and it's really pushed to one side so it's uh, just giving it a bit more room uh, to cover that back to the base plate though uh, it's got uh, two channels in uh, sort of opposing directions so it's uh, a grid as it were a network uh, of um, of channels for water to go through uh, that is fine it's kind of a direction agnostic uh, since the inlet is right in the center so it's going to be uh, pushing through all those channels or a lot of those channels um, I wouldn't say all because I think the edge cases uh, in in the corners they're really not going to get a huge amount of direct flow but indirect maybe either way it does increase the surface area so it gives it a good chance to perform well if you're wondering by the way uh, that grid is 27 millimeters uh, across and and up um, one thing though that is uh, it's not an issue it's just interesting to see uh, is there are some defects to the edges or the the ends of the channels uh, i'm not sure whether that's uh, whether the cnc bit was too hot too cold not enough um, lubricant and that sort of stuff. No idea, but there are some defects. It's interesting to see, but the channels are completely fine. And there aren't any burrs sticking out of them, at least from what I can tell from zooming in and stuff on the camera. So uh, as far as I can tell, all good. No random bits of uh, junk inside that's gonna go and screw up your uh, the rest of your loop. On the installation, overall, this is where my, my issue is with recommending this for a beginner, is it's very fiddly and, and the, the process of installing it, uh, the parts included for installing the mounting hardware is it's very bare bones, it's very simplistic, uh, and I do think it could do with, if it were to be upgraded or to be uh, revised, then it could do with a little bit more care and attention in that regard, but frankly this is such a cheap block, it's, it's hard to complain, but again, Maybe not for beginners, but for uh, people who are, who are uh, regulars or at least some, somewhat experienced in this stuff. Should be able to go, grab hold of this thing uh, and steer it in the right direction during install. So, um, first thing, the, uh, the included washers, uh, they had no hope of going over the posts, the included posts. Um, in, uh, for the uh, LJ115X um, socket that I've been installing it to, um, yeah, the, the posts and all of them for that regard, those washers cannot fit over. Luckily, they're nylon washers, so I was able to get a needle-nosed uh, file set and uh, file that, that hole out a little bit more uh, so I could get them to just about fit over and uh, not, not overly round out that hole or open up that, that central hole so that it becomes too loose, but just fit over and have enough friction to hold itself in place, which was useful for installation. So if you do that, 
make sure you don't go too far because if it's all loose it'll be much more of a pain to install my biggest issue again is the amount of fiddly small parts you have to assemble either side of the board means that the chances of one falling off or slipping off or just being a little awkward to install is is difficult that is is an issue uh, but also uh, it's very easy to over tighten this uh, you know you've got your washers so there's essentially load balancing uh, springs load balancing springs but uh, even then even when you haven't fully compressed those springs um, the, it, the board flexes a lot and uncomfortably so uh, so that's really where my main issue comes with regarding recommending this for beginners. I'd hate to recommend it for a beginner, somebody who's never installed a water block or maybe even installed many decent um, air coolers to their board and for them to just over tighten this thing because the stops, safety stops for over tightening and too much pressure on the board, they're not in place and uh, yeah, so it's tricky to recommend. Um, also, I found balancing the back plate because you get a foam pad uh, to press against the, the back of your socket, um, the press against the back of the socket so the uh, the back plate doesn't come into contact with it. Uh, that creates a pivot point. So you're, in, you're constantly like trying to pivot out uh, the four screws in the top, um, top and bottom corners or on all corners uh, to make sure the pressure is even. It's tricky to do. You've got to pay a good amount of attention to it. And if you were installing this, into a, a board that's mounted into a case, I would take the board out because uh, yeah, you might you might end up over tightening one end and under tightening other ends and getting uneven pressure in the end. Just to cover the stuff that you get with it, uh, you get back plates for all sorts of uh, of sockets. I'll put the the amount or the actual ones on the screen. You get bolts, washers, springs, uh, nuts, and uh, you get paste included. I don't use thermal paste. Uh, I use MX4, which is my test paste. Um, I actually I used to use this for air coolers a lot, but then I got into the, the thought or the mindset that uh, people uh, using air coolers, they're, they're more than likely going to use the paste that comes with it since most paste is fine. Uh, there is There are differences between pastes, but they're, they're not massive. Um, but people who are going to be using blocks are much more likely to be more into the custom game and frankly you're spending a lot of money anyway on your system. The chances of you selecting a specific paste would be quite high so I'm using a standard for all of them so there aren't any variances based on the paste that comes with it which may uh, in all likelihood not be used by most people. I did a poll on this just to see what the general uh, consensus was, what of my subscribers was and uh, most people agreed with that kind of mindset but there is no right or wrong answer in that. Uh, different people doing reviews on this stuff might use the paste that it comes with. That's fine. Uh, that's just that's just my methodology or my mindset that's guiding methodology for testing. As for the actual testing, I did encounter an issue when using uh, the Alpha Cool block, uh, and the issue was that my VRM was overheating and it was going to like 105 degrees Celsius and uh, shutting down the system uh, before, way before uh, the hard limit that I've set for the CPU to be 100 degrees was met uh, by the CPU package. Um, yeah, the, the VRM was completely toasted. So I had to go and install a uh, very basic, very um, unappealing looking bracket system, uh, funnily enough using uh, IKEA furniture uh, wall bracket, brackets um, and uh, get a, uh, a fan over, just over the VRM to uh, to blow down and, and give it a bit of cooling. Unfortunately, this meant I also had to retest uh, my EK block, which I did previous testing on, because I don't want to end up having uh, any differences in the testing uh, setup uh, between blocks. That would be unfair. I did that retesting, and the difference was actually one degree between them, which is within testing tolerance, but uh, I'd still I still feel much more comfortable having done the retesting to know for sure. Um, but yeah, I also did the retesting on the Alpha Cool block, uh, but the XP3 Lite um, to check if that had any differences uh, between when it was crashing um, without the VRM cooling and without the crashing. And there was actually more substantial difference there. I, honestly, it's hard to tell sometimes um, what the chain reaction of, uh, of, of setups like this is. So it's just best to keep it all consistent. So that's to say uh, the Alpha Cool XP3 Lite or, or Nexus XP3 Lite is actually in line with the performance of uh, the much more complicated EK um, Supremacy Evo water block. Uh, that one has um, specific uh, splitters and uh, flow controls and that kind of stuff. It does have micro channels or 
small channels uh, in there as well. So it's a pretty uh, well designed block in itself. I'll have to get the latest one to, to see what the difference is between old and new and between uh, the cheapest on the market today and EK's uh, best and brightest today. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's quite interesting though that something that has a basic black plastic molded uh, built in with uh, with all the features the splitters and that sort of stuff the cheapest that i can basically get my hands on 22 pounds or something along those lines um yeah it is up there with the best of the best from five years ago so is that just improvements in technology or is this just you don't need more than this uh, who knows in conclusion uh, great performance but poor accessibility regarding the installation which again leads me like i said to at the start trying to be transparent here that if you're an absolute beginner i would not recommend uh, getting this block because you might not have the um they might have the experience to understand that hey this motherboard flex you're seeing it's just too much and it looks a bit sketchy um some people without that experience might look at it and be like mm, okay and then there might be some damage to their board and i'd hate for that to happen uh, but if you've got your eye in with the panel flex you, or the board flex you'd expect to see from installing a cooler and generally speaking you do see a little bit at least because you are putting direct pressure around that area then i would recommend this um so yeah the base plate design is excellent and uh, and it has got overall excellent value performance wise and with the price um on that note about the uh, installation situation um Especially beginners take note uh, of this, the EK Supremacy Evo uh, and ones like that. Um, you don't bottom out the springs, uh, the sort of load balancing or the pressure balancing springs um, before you before you hit a stop. Whereas with this one, you do. And once you've bottomed those springs out, you are just directly putting pressure onto the board and how hard you turn it directly correlates to how much pressure you're adding. Um, when, unlike when the springs are actually um, not plastic i guess elastic to a certain degree um they're, they're they're balancing the pressure out a little bit for you so there we go um excellent value would recommend for definitely 100 watt loads 150 watt loads i'd be comfortable with if you're looking for something like 200 watt loads or more that's the point where i'd start to say you might want to check out uh, a review specifically of this block uh, with someone with a, another channel that has that kind of um, hardware uh, that they're using for testing, and uh, there are t they are actually testing at that kind of load. Uh, I was testing at 100 watts with this 95 watt TDP uh, CPU, 6700K, uh, but other people might be testing with bigger CPUs in general with more wattage uh, to to work with. So there we go. Thanks for checking this one out. I will be testing some barrel blocks soon. I've got two on the shelf uh, over there uh, actually i'll see what they are first and then you can know what's coming up so in here uh coming up next or in the very near future we have the uh, barrow raise edition aurora cpu water block and it says 1700 intel 1700 um, i'm hoping that package uh, is suitable for 11 5x um packages as well or or sockets um and then there's also the barrow acrylic icicle series um and again that is at least as it says on there is compatible so we're going to be testing those i hope you enjoyed this one um, i hope my recommendations were clear enough if they weren't uh, and you need clarification in the comments below otherwise thank you for checking this one out and uh yeah oh yeah amazon uh, affiliate links uh, or associate links in the video description uh, if you do purchase through those then it does give a small kickback to me and also if you want to um I don't like doing this now. It feels more cringy than anything. Um, but if you want to support me further, there is a Patreon and you can check out the people who are supporting me. That's not cringy. People who are supporting me, they're great. Uh, but it kind of feels a little bit money grubbing to, to ask for it. So um, yeah, if you have any comments on that, by the way, then please let me know. Anyway, thanks guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.